Hello there. Thanks for watching these videos on the initial testing and inspection of an electrical installation. And this is the initial testing. So this means before the installation has been put into service, before it's been made live. So all the testing in these videos is dead. It's all dead testing. So please do take that in mind. And also that these videos are only intended as an additional resource in your electrical training. If you're not electrically skilled or you're not getting electrical training, if you're not in the instruction of anybody with electrical skills or knowledge, please don't be working on any electrical installations because you may get hurt and we really don't want that. Okay, I hope you find these videos of some use. Thanks now. So this is the first test when you're doing initial testing and inspection of a new installation and it's the continuity of circuit protective conductors. Now this is a dead test, the supply is not actually connected to the board yet and the supply is not connected because you haven't tested the installation. And so this is the first test and it's a very important test because it's confirming that the circuit is protected. The CPC is the protective conductor. This will detect a fault, say in this washing machine. This washing machine developed a fault. It's a protective conductor that takes the fault back to the consumer unit and that will trip the MCB. So it's very important that you do confirm that the CPC is at every point of utilisation. In this video we're going to go through how to actually test that this CPC does get to every point. It's important before we start doing any meter tests that we null out our test leads. Now what's that mean? Well nulling out is removing the resistance from the probes. So if we put these probes together and press the test button, we get a reading. We don't want that reading adding to any testing we're doing. So there'll be a function on your test meter whereby when you put the probe together and press a button, it'll null out the reading. You'll get a reading of 0, 0.00 on your display and you'll know that the leads have been nulled out. And any reading that you do get when you're doing your testing is purely the circuit that you are testing and the leads are not adding to that resistance. So that's what nulling out the leads means. And it's important to do that for every test. So how do we confirm that the CPC, which starts in the consumer unit, reaches this socket, this socket, and this socket? Well, if you look a bit closer, this is the CPC in the consumer unit. And the CPC at the furthest point. Now we put a temporary link between the CPC and the line cable and then we go to each point and test between the CPC and the line cable conductor with a test meter we can take a reading. If this is a basic drawing of what we've actually done here's the connection in the consumer unit and we've created a loop a loop with the line and CPC connected together and we're testing at these open ends here and that should give us a reading that this is a continuous circuit. If there was a break in this, we wouldn't get a reading, it would be an open circuit. So we test this every socket. And at the furthest point, we do a reading and we call this our R1 plus R2. So it's quite a simple test. We link these out and take a reading at each socket with our test meter. And in this case, we've got a reading of 0 0.58 ohms. Now, what we need to work out is if that reading of 0 0.58 ohms is acceptable. It's shown that we've got continuity, but it's only a number. We need to work out as well if that's an acceptable number. So this is inside the consumer unit, and you can see here the temporary link where we've linked together the CPC and the line conductor to enable our testing. And when we're testing, we give these conductors a name. The CPC is known as the R2. The line conductor is known as the R1. The neutral, which is not needed in this test, will be known as the RN. It's also important to remember that when you finish testing is to remove this temporary link as soon as you can. This is not a live test. The cable is not even in the MCB and no power to the fuse board whatsoever. But always remember to remove any temporary links as soon as you finish doing any testing. We've finished our test on the continuity of circuit protective conductors for this circuit. We've got a reading of 0 0.58 ohms, which we've recorded, so we don't forget that. We've also removed our temporary link, so we don't forget that. 
Now we want to work out as if this reading of 0.58 ohms is acceptable. What do we know about this circuit? We know it's wider than 2.5 mm squared twin earth cable. We know the cable length from the consumer unit to the furthest point is 30 meters. This is where we can use the on-site guide to help us verify that the measured reading that we took is within an acceptable range. So we turn to appendix I, table I1, and there's a whole list of different conductor sizes. And this list gives the cross-sectional area of both the line conductor and the protective conductor. And we've used 2.5 mm squared twin and earth cable, and the 2.5 mm squared is the line conductor, which has a resistance of 7.41 milliohms per meter. The protective conductor has a smaller cross-sectional area of 1.5 mm squared, hence the resistance is slightly higher at 12.1 milliohms per meter. And what the table also does, it does a combined measurement of resistance for the line conductor and the protective conductor. This is quite handy when you're measuring or calculating your twin in earth. You just use that one reading. This reading here, 19.51 milliohms per meter. It's some simple maths. All we need to do is times the 19.51 milliohms by 30. Don't forget that's the length of the circuit. We get an answer. And we divide that by a thousand to convert the milliohms into ohms. We want this recording in ohms. Right, we've done the maths, and the maths confirms a reading of 0.58 ohms for the length of the circuit, and that correlates with the measured reading that we took with our meter. And so we can be happy with that circuit. It's within range, and we can record that reading as our R1 plus R2 for this circuit. And all we need to do now is test every other circuit that's in the fuse board and do the same thing. The only slight difference is the one for the ring final circuits. We'll talk about those. That's got a slightly different test, and we'll talk about that test next. Let's just talk through what we've done. We've done the continuity of circuit protective conductors. This is the first test and our initial verification and testing of a new installation. We know that the supply is isolated, the supply is not connected yet. And the purpose of the test is to verify that the CPC is continuous from the fuse board to every point on the circuit all the way to the furthest point and is correct, terminated correctly at each point on the circuit. We do the test by linking out the line and the CPC, R1 plus R2, and we test at each point with our low ohms tester. And at the furthest point, the reading we take, we record as our R1 plus R2. And we record that on our installation certificate. When we finish the test, we remove the link and we move on to our next test, which will be the um, continuity of your ring final conductors. And we'll talk about that in the next video. Okay, thanks.